Hello and welcome, I am Raziel and it is Dystopian Age Week. So let's actually talk about the Dystopian Age. The Dystopian Age is a fantastic setting, I love it. The first thing that it really appeals to me, it's Victorian times, it's the Wild West, it's the feudal Japan era, you know, when people started learning about the Oriental areas, you've got the mass discovery that happened of land and everything, the time where human growth and progress was really at a high level and War Cradle has just taken that and just turned it all the way up to 11 and oh geez seriously I could go on so much about why I like the dystopian age I've, some of the best parts of this is just there is so many varieties of army even though in the most part they're all humans we don't have anything really like goblins dwarves uh, space elves or anything like that Yes, there is the Hex, there is the Order of the Allshard and the Watchers. You have these extra elements which are extraterrestrial, which again adds so much to the story. If you look at the Dystopian Wars Sultanate fleet, right now you can see there's this absolute, and it's so cool to see it, this theme that you can see the Order of the Allshard is actually helping them. They got that theme going through that, that almost alien look to the ships. The... And things like the Enlightened. The Enlightened may not be my favourite faction. They're not a bad faction. They're in every game. They're in Yes, they're in every game. They're in Mythos, War, uh, Dystopian Wars, Dy uh, um, Armoured Clash, and of course, Wild West Exodus. And all, every single model which is out for the Enlightened looks like something a mad scientist would come up with from robotic squids sort of creatures, flying UFOs. And just some of their ships are just so full of weirdness, which is just makes it so cool. Now let's actually talk about the dystopian age and what it is. The dystopian age, as I said, is an alternate timeline, and it's set way back when during Victorian times. So what happened is this: they discovered a substance that could start creating electricity and power. So things like they were getting street lights, which didn't rely on natural gas. They were getting uh, motorised vehicles, such as the Iron Horses and the Iron Eagles, and of course the tanks. Everything was so far more advanced. We're seeing what came back way before. They came back way after, I should say, Victorian times. We were seeing tanks. That was one of the best things I like about the Armoured Clash is the Crown tanks. They look like World War One tanks during Victorian times. So they have all that Baroque art, uh, decoration. They look very, what can I say, ornament, or ornamental? That's a good word, we'll use that word. You know, they look lavish. They look sweet and designed as they were made by artisans, which were similar to the times of Victorian age. And when we look at the Union, it's far more military. It's far more factory-made. It's very much designed for a purpose and does not go away from that purpose at all and the fact that these themes fit throughout the entire setting doesn't matter who you go with if you're Wild West Texas and you look at the Empire with the pride of Nekamata they still have that samurai Japanese look and then when you go to the dragons of the ships of the fleets of the Empire again you've got the dragons the flying cities just so fantastic and of course their tanks and their models you've like you've got Lion Automata and the terracotta soldiers, things that we know are very much, uh, not Middle Eastern, uh, East Asian, you know, Japanese, Chinese, Thailand, all that area we can see within their models, and it ties in perfectly to this age. The Sultanate is another good example of this Middle Eastern culture that happened during the Victorian times. We can look at this up, and you can see the similarities, and it's just again it's amped up to 11 as if they had this extra dimensional which they do uh, help us make enough stuff for them and we know they do the order of the Allshot has been on earth for thousands of years if not millions because they were one of the ones that started it when they were in Atlantis or Atlantia given what's what they call it this is just one thing that makes it amazing and then they got a fight and like Two of the factions, the Order of the Orchard and the Watchers, are end-game factions. So we know that it could be an end to the story, and it can end in many different ways. No other setting that I know of has that. No other setting in any war game, 
excluding historical, has factions which actually will make an end game storyline. The Watchers will either destroy the planet or create world peace, once so ending the dystopian age. The Order of the Allshard will either destroy the planet or destroy the Hex. These are end game stories for the setting and it is completely unique to the dystopian age to have factions that will do have end game goals. I think it's absolutely fantastic to see that and read it in the lore that these things could happen and it would finish the setting off. It's not bad having a setting that has an ending or a hypothetical ending which is described within the law. It's actually really good because it sets it within a very cool time period where you can sort of explore and add more stories. Like, what if the Watchers didn't end up in Arizona? What if we see Watchers in the Empire aiding them out? Or, you know, just trying to be, uh, trying to, you know, corrupt and influence the leaders of the Empire or the Sultanate being, instead of having the Order of the Orshard, having the Watchers with them as well. See, this is the stuff that makes the dystopian age during the setting so fantastic. The themes fit throughout each game. And then, talking about the themes and the settings, it's one of the few ones where we actually see how the how the time period is affecting people of the same country but of the different areas. We have New England with Mythos and the monsters and the Cthulhu like and everything like that happening in New England where in Arizona we got the wildest exodus and we got everything happening there. They're very different, same country, governed by the same people but very very different settings and again this is just something which absolutely amazes me. And finally, when we talk about the games, we have almost, there's so many genres and gameplay styles covered in this in this setting, which again, very few other games even do. Yes, most games have a skirmish, uh, epic scale, and, you know, big battle games, or naval battle games, stuff like that, that happens quite often. But to have a pseudo-historical with Armored Clash, that's a pseudo-historical game. It's using a lot of references from Victorian England. I'm painting my crown as red coat because it fits the setting. Or I might actually do some with green jackets, you know, because again, that would fit the setting. Same with the Empire. It's a pseudo historical form of play outside of it. And you've got the very science fiction, very, you know, I don't want to call it steampunk because it's not quite steampunk, but science fiction setting of Wild West Exodus and the very near fantasy setting of mythos you have the naval game the two different skirmish games which play completely different but are compatible at the same time this is what makes dystopian age so cool and one of the best settings there is so much to talk about and honestly if you want to get into it it's one of the best games they make the best games and i'll die on this hill i'll say it again they make the best models they are just so good and so cool honestly i would say give it a chance have some fun armored clash is out now and this is my video, this is just, like I said, this is me being very excitable and just discussing, like, trying to do a very short video on why I love the dystopian age. And I could actually go into every single faction and why it's so cool. And I could, and I would just talk up hours and hours, but I'm not a documentarian, I do not do that. I like making short, sweet videos which, you know, don't take me much time to make, and you give you about 10 minutes to listen to me talk. Anyway. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you all again soon. Uh, Net Tomorrow is a campaign video. I'm going to talk about how to do a campaign within this setting using three different games. And these three different games are Wildest Exodus, Armored Clash, and Dystopian Wars. If you want to get all your War Cradle stuff, I suggest you really get into this game. It's so good. It's so fantastic. Look at War Cradle, uh, Wayland Games down below. And it's free delivery after £20. And all the games are there. Mythos, Wildest Exodus... Uh, Dystopian Wars and of course Armored Clash <coughs> even though Armored Clash only has the two factions but we're getting all the factions again something great we're getting all the factions within a year something else we rarely see that's down below we also have Forbidden Planet as well that's a nice cool comic shop there is my merchandise and my comics they're down below and there is Skyforge never forget Skyforge good friend of mine and finally Patreon because business bye bye